This episode of the Demonic Compendium contains spoilers for the following games. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to an apish new episode of the Demonic Compendium, the show where I discuss the mythology, design, and game history of your favorite Megami Tensei demons. Seeing as how I've been living in Beijing for the better part of a year now, I feel like I should probably talk about at least one Chinese demon before I go. So I think it's time I stop monkeying around, so today, we're talking about Sun Wukong. Sun Wukong, known to many as the Monkey King, is a famous trickster hero from Chinese literature, dating back to the 16th century. He appeared in GOG, or again, as we know it, Journey to the West, where the ape was born from a stone on top of the mountain of flowers and fruit. Now, the entirety of Wukong's exploits is far too lengthy to cover in a short video like this, but he became King of the Monkeys by going through a waterfall. The name Son Wukong, or Son Goku in Japanese, roughly translates to Monkey Awakened to Emptiness, and was given to him by his first master, who also taught him many of the magical arts he'd later use to get into mischief. Being a magical king quickly went to Wukong's head, and he decided he needed a weapon worthy of him. So naturally, he traveled the oceans and obtained the Rui Jingubong Staff from the Eastern Dragon King. This staff weighed over 13,000 jin, and when he wasn't using it, he would shrink it down and tuck it behind his ear. Oh, and for good measure, he also stole a golden chainmail shirt, boots that let him walk on clouds, and a phoenix feather cap from the other Dragon Kings. You know, for good measure. After he caused enough havoc for the gods, including wiping his name from the Underworld's Book of Life and Death, essentially granting him immortality, they decided to tattle on him to the Jade Emperor. Sun Wukong was given a job in heaven, with the Emperor hoping the responsibility would keep him in line and teach him to behave. Which, to me, sounds like if you let a kid plan their own meals, you hope they'll pick broccoli over hot fudge pizza. Unsurprisingly, Sun Wukong was not happy with his low-ranking heavenly job, and gave himself the title of Chitian Dasheng, or Satan Taisei in Japanese. Roughly translated, this means Great Sage who is equal to heaven. Sun Wukong continued causing problems, like stealing the Peaches of Immortality, making him... double immortal? When the gods attempted to kill him in a furnace, he survived by hiding in the corner, though it did give him a weakness to smoke, which made Wukong decide wiping out heaven's entire army was a fair trade. At the end of their wits, the gods and Jade Emperor appealed to the Buddha, who challenged Wukong to escape from his palm. Unable to do so, Satan Taisei was imprisoned under a mountain for 500 years. He was eventually freed and tasked with protecting the pilgrim, Tang Sanzang, in his titual journey to the west. Though he is forced to wear a magical headband that causes him great pain and discomfort when a certain mantra is chanted. On this journey, he achieves enlightenment and ascends to Buddhahood with the title Zhou Sangsheng Fo, or Victorious Fighting Buddha. The Monkey King is a well-known figure, not just from his literary history, but in several facets of pop culture, ranging from cartoons, video games, anime, more video games, movies, even more video games, the list goes on. It's worth mentioning that Sun Wukong seems to draw heavy inspiration from the Hindu monkey god Hanuman, but this section has gone on long enough, so let's save Hanuman talk for another day. Sun Wukong's compendium entry from Persona 3 refers to him as Satan Taisei, but says, Sun Wukong was supposedly born from a rock. He wreaked havoc and was punished by Buddha, but was eventually saved by a monk named Sun Sung. Design-wise, Wukong has had a couple of iterations, with most games using his Shin Megami Tensei design or Devil Summoner design. He is often shown to resemble either a macaque or a gibbon, as the Monkey King was often described as one of these two. He's shown wearing red or yellow, both of which have been seen in classic artwork. Both designs depict him with his four treasures, the boots that let him walk on clouds, the armor, even if it is hidden beneath his robe, his cap, and naturally his famous staff. Though neither design has the magical headband, possibly implying these versions of Wukong exist prior to his imprisonment. The symbol on his SMT design's robe means roughly equal, in reference to the Satan Taisei title. His Demikid's design is just a cute cartoony monkey, and while he doesn't have his cloud, this one does have the circlet upon his head, as well as the iconic staff. And most recently, Satan Taisei appeared in Persona 5 with a brand new design. 
He has many of the elements and features from his demon depictions, with a few changes, like the chainmail being a bit more obvious, and on his staff we see a design reading 8000k. Because the Rui Jingu Bong weighs 13,500 jin, or 8 tons, or 16,000 pounds, or, you guessed it, around 8,000 kilograms. He also has more of a punk motif specifically tying him to his Persona user. As far as game history goes, Sun Wukong, or Satan Taisei, has been around for quite a while. I was curious if there were any apparent rules as to what name to call him for each game, and... Apparently not, because he was Satan Taisei in Devil Survivor, but Wukong in Devil Survivor 2. In Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne, Wukong is the only demon that must be acquired through Chain Evolution. The Demi-Fiend must first evolve an Onkot into Hanuman, and the Hanuman into Wukong. With immunity to physical attacks and instant death spells, affinity-wise, Wukong is one of the best demons in the game, provided you fuse some decent magic onto your original Onkot. Sun Wukong appears in a few side quests in Shin Megami Tensei 4. He first shows up in the side quest, Capture the Berserker, where Flynn must track down and defeat the Monkey King. The quest is given by Erlong Shun in a direct reference to his source material. In a nod to his ascension to Buddhahood, Wukong returns in the quest Sunset for a Demon Napper, this time in a more helpful role, aiding Flynn to help Haridi find her baby. Wukong was pretty infamous in Shin Megami Tensei's Strange Journey because of an interesting typo. In an attempt to protect a cosmic egg, Wukong accidentally refers to the final boss of the game as Mistress Jimenez. Oops. However, this typo was fixed in Strange Journey Redux. In the previously mentioned Devil Survivor 2, Wukong is unlocked for fusion by reaching Fate Rank 5 with Daichi Shijima. And who do we unlock at Rank 3? Why Hanuman, of course. And trust me, that's not the last connection we're going to talk about today. Sun Wukong, or Satan Taisei, has made regular appearances in the Persona series. In Persona 1, where he was known as Shaolin in Revelations Persona, and in the Persona 2 duology, he was a member of the Chariot Arcana. In Persona 3 and Persona Q, he was changed to the Tower Arcana, though when added to Persona 4 Golden, he was a member of the Lust Arcana, which is fitting with its theme of defeated or disrespected mythological figures. But most importantly, Satan Taisei returns to the Chariot Arcana in Persona 5, as the ultimate persona of Ryuji Sakamoto. Like every member of the Phantom Thieves, Ryuji's ultimate persona is a mythological trickster, with Ryuji's being foreshadowed by Morgana referring to Ryuji as a carnal blonde monkey. It's also worth mentioning that fusing Hanuman with the electric chair in Persona 5 results in the creation of Ryuji's ultimate weapon, the Rui Jingu Bang. Also, in Demi Kids, he's just called Goku. Dragon Ball joke. And so there you have it, Sun Wukong or Satan Taisei, the sly sky staff slinging simian sneak with shoes to step on Stratus. Did I leave out something you thought was important? Was I just plain wrong about something? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to let me know who you'd like to see me talk about in future episodes. That's going to do it for this episode of the Demonic Compendium, and I'll see you next time. But be careful while you rest that a demon doesn't take over your body.